Data tells us how the world changes in ways we could never have imagined. For example, it shows us that COVID-19 has drastically transformed the way we live, in case you need the data to know that. But let's be more precise because McKinsey and company reported that just within the first eight weeks of the pandemic, we moved forward five years in terms of consumer and business digital adoption. And what's the first consequence of that? A lot of data, which means every day more and more data professionals are needed. But which skills do they need to tackle that data to stay relevant in the future? That is what we are answering today. Come along. Hi, I'm Juan, I'm a data trainer at Growth Tribe, and like many of you, I'm curious about the trends in data science, especially about the skills people have and the skills people need. So together with my team, we ask many of you to rank yourself and your company in various data fields. Here's an example. From one to four, how much do you agree with it is our highest ambition to work in a data-driven way? Or another one, we have a clear data strategy and allocate resources accordingly. And what we discovered was, that in terms of ambition, everybody's doing great. In terms of reality, not so much. Actually, there were two clear clusters of similar size in the whole sample. People in the first group score high in ambition, but low in real capabilities. We call these the talkers. And the second group did well in ambition, but also in real capabilities. We call these the doers. Now, the key differences between these two groups are five data skills that could benefit you and your company. These are the five skills that can turn you from a talker into a doer. Skill number one, analytics and machine learning capabilities. We just don't have enough people to deal with all the data out there, and we don't have enough expertise within many companies. A recent poll from the Kearney Group showed that 50% of the companies relied on data more than ever, but 47% still didn't have a quantifiable analytics business case. And what about machine learning? The picture is similar. A recent study from Geeks for Geeks has estimated the potential revenue from machine learning to be $7.3 billion this year. And that is expected to grow by 2024 to $30.6 billion. You would think people are getting on that train. But again, McKinsey shows that only 50% of the respondents have adopted AI. By the way, if you're still in doubt about the difference between AI, machine learning, deep learning, I recommend watching this video from Bernardo. Once you clarify those concepts, take a moment and think. Do you need to implement this yourself? If you do, I recommend you to come to our 12-week data analytics course to work on your foundation knowledge. But if you don't have enough time or financial resources to commit to a course, no worries, you should be able to understand and evaluate data projects by watching our YouTube videos, where we share a lot of practical tips and tricks. Just check out our channel for more. Skill number two, running machine learning pilot projects. You might be thinking, well, if I don't have machine learning skills, how am I supposed to run pilot projects? What's interesting is that this question had a poll score also between the doers, which means even people who can run pilot projects don't do it often enough. This comes down to the company culture and how much you encourage experimentation. In his book, Experimentation Works, Stefan H. Thomke found out that companies that experiment significantly outperform the S&P 500 index. This experimentation mindset also extends to machine learning. Pilot projects will help you determine how you can use this technology. Are the pilot projects working? Great double down on them. Do you realize you don't need machine learning at all, just analytics? Nothing wrong with that. That is the case for many companies. But if you don't try, you'll never find out. To help you with experimentation, I recommend watching David's video on the growth process. That will give you a great roadmap to create those pilot projects you need. I'd like to take a moment now to reflect on experimentation with data. Imagine that instead of running quick experiments, you design a huge project that will solve all your data problems at once. So you spend thousands or even millions of euros collecting data. And then you get to the next step and you realize you need to invest even more to clean the data. And if you have the patience to follow all the steps and to see that through, you might create a machine learning model that in the end isn't any good. It just doesn't give you any clear insights. So all that money is wasted. This is what you want to avoid with experimentation. Skill number three, developing a clear data strategy. You might be wondering, why is developing a data strategy in the third place? Shouldn't it be the first and most important skill? Well, it's coming in the third place because it doesn't make sense to have a data strategy without projects to support it. Many people have observed this before. For example, the AI transformation playbook from Landing AI advises you to start with pilot projects, then build a team, then provide AI training, and only then develop an AI strategy. 
and a data strategy is equivalent. Now, what can help you develop this strategy? First, know your data roles. This article from Hakanun describes the different positions very well and also criticizes how many managers expect to have 10 exact copies of the same computer science professor. Talk about being single-minded. What else will help you? Knowing whether you need a defensive or an offensive data strategy. A defensive data strategy is about ensuring compliance with regulations, using analytics to detect and limit fraud, and building systems to prevent theft. An offensive data strategy is about supporting business objectives such as increasing revenue, profitability, and customer satisfaction. It's then up to you to figure out if you need an offensive data strategy for some of the products and a defensive one for others, and determine what roles you've covered in your team to make that happen. Skill number four, standardizing processes. Also very related to your data strategy, this is about creating robust processes to coordinate your data projects. It's quite common to borrow the approach from software development called DevOps, which allows you to coordinate with the IT operations. But there are some subtle points that are specific to data operations. Some people state this quite clearly. In this example, data ops is not just DevOps for data. One tool that can help you start with the standardization of processes is our data task checklist that you can download in the link below. Completely free, no questions asked, apart from the ones that will help you shape your data project. The checklist will guide you through the whole journey from the collection of data to the interaction with stakeholders and the production of business value, making sure you tend to all key aspects of the projects along the way. And skill number five, data visualization and storytelling massive difference between doers and talkers, and also one of the most cited challenges in the open-ended survey we run. How do you measure the impact of good data visualization storytelling? Well, you tell me. When a project works out and gets deployed, is it because the project was useful or is it because the results were well presented? It's difficult to say how much the communication aspect influenced that decision, but we all agree nonetheless that it is important. So if you're looking to up your game in data visualization, I recommend you the book Storytelling with Data by Cole Nussbaum and Affleck. I know, I know, I'm recommending a book called Storytelling with Data for the visualization part. This is because the line between the two is a bit blurry. Data storytelling is still an emerging field, so we struggle to come up with a clear definition. What I find is that we're often not aware of all the ways storytelling could help us communicate our data. I'll leave you here an article that explains how to use storylines to open up spreadsheets, data tables, and other complicated diagrams. Brand new content for you just because you made it until the end of the video. So remember, the top five data skills you should work on are analytics and machine learning capabilities, running machine learning pilot projects, developing a clear data strategy, standardizing processes, data visualization, and storytelling. As you can see, these cover many levels of the data pipeline, but just before you start with all this, make sure you have access to the data. You wouldn't believe how many companies don't have that sorted out. Let us know in the comments what other data skills you're planning to learn, and don't forget to subscribe and to download the report all these insights came from. Thanks for watching.